Hey, Roland Frazier here, and today we are talking about what are the most important factors to know when you're buying a business. So there's a few of them, and we're going to talk about them. The first one, the first question that I think is really important for you to answer is how are you going to define your acquisition criteria? So acquisition criteria is the first thing that any acquirer is going to do, like a professional acquirer, like a private equity firm or um, a SPAC that's into acquisitions or a family office. They're always going to say, well, what kinds of businesses do we want to buy? Because if you don't know what kind of business you want to buy, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, particularly when you follow the plan that I have, which is generally how can we acquire with no money out of pocket, because we're not constrained by having some fund that is a finite amount of capital that we can acquire with. We effectively, when we're not using any capital at all out of our own pocket to acquire, we effectively have an unlimited checkbook. So a lot of times when, uh, when I teach people how to do that, they'll go out and just acquire a whole bunch of unrelated things. And so they end up at the end of the day with, uh, gosh, a, a bar, uh, a uh, soap manufacturer and um, a tour business and um, a sandwich shop. I mean, just like, it's like they don't really, or, and maybe a junkyard and a manufacturer. It's like, they have nothing to do with each other. So that's kind of hard. And um, it's easy to do because you're a kid in a candy store once you know how to do that. But um, it, it, it really is smarter, I think, and will save you a lot more headaches and make life easier for you if you establish what is the criteria for the thing that you want to acquire before you just go out and start unleashing your tools of acquiring without money out of pocket on the world. And um, and so the first thing that, that I think is good to do is to determine, um, I, I use a kind of a matrix to do this. And so the, the very first thing, and this makes a lot of difference and it sounds kind of cliche, but, um, find something that you like, make a list of the things that you actually enjoy. And so I do this in a, in like a quadrant, you can do it on a piece of paper with, you know, four different sections, however you want. But the very first thing that you want to brainstorm is what are the things I actually like to do? Because being an entrepreneur is hard. Even if you acquire the company with no money out of pocket, once you own it and it's profitable, business is hard. It, it's this stuff is going to happen. There are going to be challenges with people. There are going to be things that happen that you didn't think about that, um, that are surprising that you can deal with, but it's a whole lot more motivating to go forward and deal with it if you actually have an interest in the kind of business. So what are the things that you're passionate about? What are your hobbies and interests? Take an inventory of those things first. And that to me is the first step of how to determine your acquisition criteria. So the second step of determining your acquisition criteria, to me, I think it makes sense to say, what do I have experience in, in the past? So separately, I would brainstorm this. The first thing that I brainstorm is, uh, what are the things I'm passionate about? Now we're talking about, um, I don't care if you're passionate about it or not, just what do you actually have experience in? And just kind of brainstorm, write down all of the, the types of things that you've actually done. So I've uh, done digital marketing consulting with respect to Facebook ads. I have uh, helped companies hire other people. I've worked in a, uh, a tennis shop. You know, whatever that list of experiences that you've got, um, inventory that next, and that will give you a pool of experiences that you've got that you can say, my experience here would be helpful to me in acquiring a particular business or in operating it or in owning it. That's the second step for acquisition criteria. So the third step for acquisition criteria is similar to your experiences, but it's more um, skill-based. So what do you have knowledge, training, and skills at that you can inventory so you know the things that you actually have knowledge about? Now, you might 
have trained, you might have taken a course in accounting, but you've never been an accountant. So you wouldn't have accounting experience in your experience inventory, but you would have accounting in your skills knowledge uh, category. So this is going to help too, because it's going to show you the things that you actually are good at. And these are specific skills. It might not be like a particular business, like I've run a tennis shop, but if you ran a tennis shop, you have retail store operational experience. So that would be something that you would put on that list. So now we've got an inventory of the things that we're passionate about, that we're interested in, that are hobbies and interests. Then we've got an inventory of the things that we have actually done. We've lived it, which is completely different than knowing it. Um, and that is our second category. Then our third category is the things that we actually have uh, knowledge, training, and skills at. You could also say, these are my superpowers if you wanted to. That's the third inventory that we're going to do. The fourth inventory that we're going to do with our acquisition criteria determination is we're going to say, what are all of the contacts, connections, and networking resources that I have access to? So here we're going to say, um, I know uh, the CEO of a consumer products good, com uh, consumer packaged goods company, and I know the owner of a manufacturing company, and I uh, am a member of the War Room Mastermind, uh, and uh, there's a bunch of people in there that own businesses that share. I'm a member of YPO, the Young Presidents Organization, or EO, uh, Entrepreneurs Organization. This is basically the contacts that you feel, the business contacts that could be helpful to you in business. And you're just brainstorming these things. So now you've got a category, a categorization of four types of things that are going to help you determine the type of business that you might want to buy. And so I'm looking here to find common threads between the things that you're passionate about and interested in, the things that you have experience in, the things that you have skills, training, and knowledge about, and the things that you've got business connections in. And if you can line up all four of those, so I go through after I've brainstormed all those things and then circle the passion things that are interesting to you. And then when you're going through the other three lists, think about with respect to, let's say you're passionate about travel. Um, so then think about, as you go through the other three brainstorming lists that we talked about, where do I have experience that could help me in owning a travel related company? And then where do I have training that could help me or knowledge or skills that could help me in owning a travel related company? And then last but not least, where do I have connections that could help me in a travel related company as well. And then that's going to be the very first level of determining our acquisition criteria. If you want a lot of additional really cool stuff, I've got a whole channel full of it and you should subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. I'm uploading videos all the time. There's a lot of things that are changing in this area and you don't want to miss out. You don't want to do it wrong and you don't want to make the mistakes I make. Subscribe so that you don't miss out and then check out this next video.